Thank you for joining this CS board video about Dream Diffusion. We are all aware to the massive progress in text-to-image generation with AI, with models such as Imagine, DALI 2, Stable Diffusion, and more. With these models, we provide a text prompt and get in response a high-quality image that match our text prompt. In this video, we present Dream Diffusion, a new method that takes this approach one step forward. With Dream Diffusion, instead of text prompt, the model gets as input signals recorded from the brain, which are called EEG, and the model creates high-quality image that match the brain signals. Think about it, you can record your brain while sleeping and use Dream Diffusion to visualize your dreams. That's just crazy. And from here the source for the name Dream Diffusion. Moreover, it may help people with language disabilities to express themselves. Dream Diffusion was presented in a research paper titled Dream Diffusion, Generating High Quality Images from Brain EEG Signals. And as usual, the goal of this few minutes video is to get you up to date with this new advancement by explaining the paper. Let's start with understanding the decision to use EEG signals. So, there have been similar works to generate images based on fMRI signals. The problem with that is that to obtain fMRI signals, there is a need for expensive equipment which is not easily accessible to anyone, and also it needs to be run by professionals who know what they do. Electroencephalography or EEG signals are recording of electrical activity generated by the human brain, measured using electrodes placed on the scalp, so obtaining the signal is non-invasive and does not require expensive equipment. There are even portable commercial products that can do that. All of that makes a model that is based on EEG signals to have higher usability potential. EEG data is two-dimensional, where one dimension represents the electrodes and the other dimension represents the time. EEG data tends to be noisy and have high variance which is influenced by factors such as age and sleep. We'll see in a minute how the researchers handle these challenges, but before, starting with the end in mind, let's first understand the high-level idea. The researchers' idea was to leverage the powerful generative capabilities of pre-trained text-to-image models. Specifically, they use stable diffusion to generate high-quality images directly from brain EEG signals. How can they do that? Well, when we've used stable diffusion to generate this cat image from this text prompt we saw in the beginning, we really first provided the text prompt to Clip, which is a model that connects text and images, which provided us with a vector of numbers, called embeddings or representations, which grasp the semantic meaning of the text. Clip connects text and images, and so the embeddings we would get from the cat image on the right are expected to be similar to the embeddings we get from the text prompt, which helps Stable Diffusion to be able to generate that image. So the idea is to introduce an encoder that will create embeddings from EEG signals, meaning that we could think about a cat, provide the corresponding EEG signals to that encoder, and then feed the embeddings to Stable Diffusion to generate a cat image. However, there are two major challenges with that approach. One is that EEG signals are noisy and have high variance, as we mentioned before, so it is not going to be trivial to create an encoder that is able to create high-quality embeddings. Second is that embeddings from the new encoder are not related to the clip's text and image embeddings. They are coming from a different embedding space. Clip was trained on huge dataset of image and text pairs to create similar embeddings for text and images with similar semantics, bringing images and text to the same embedding space. And this capability is important for stable diffusion to work properly. We'll now see how they overcame these challenges. Before moving on, if you like this content, then please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button to help this channel grow. In order to handle the first challenge of obtaining robust semantic representations from EEG signals that are not trivial to work with, they propose to train the EEG signals encoder using large amounts of unlabeled EEG data instead of only rare EEG image pairs. They refer to the training method they choose as mask signal pre-training, and the way it works is that given a sample of EEG signal, like this example from the paper, they randomly mask parts of the signal, so visually the mask signal would look like this, where we see many parts are hidden. The signal is converted to tokens, and the mask tokens are provided to the encoder we wish to train. The encoder yields embeddings, which we then feed to a decoder model, which is using the embeddings to predict the missing parts in the signal. And then we get a reconstruction of the original signal. And as we can see here, the reconstruction is not perfect, but it does do pretty well to match the overall trend. When this pre-training process is completed, the graduated encoder is able to generate semantic representation for EEG signals, 
However, as we mentioned earlier, this representation are not similar to what stable diffusion is used to see from clip. So let's move on to talk about how they handle that. To overcome this gap, the researchers used a small dataset of EEG image pairs, where each EEG image pair has a sample of EEG signal and an image that match that signal. They've used it in two different ways. One is for adapting the EEG embeddings to be more similar to clip. For each EEG image pair, the image is fed into clip, which can work with both text or image, and clip yields an embedding for the image, which is a semantic representation of that image. Similarly, the EEG is fed into the EEG encoder, which also yields an embedding, which is a semantic representation of the input EEG signal. Even though the EEG signal and the image are semantically related, their embeddings are likely not similar. Stable diffusion is used to work with clip embeddings, so the idea here is to make the embeddings of the EEG encoder more similar to clip embeddings for inputs from the same pair by minimizing the diff between the EEG and the image embeddings. This process brings the embeddings for EEG and images closer to the same embedding space. The second thing they did here is fine-tuning. They have fine-tuned stable diffusion and the EEG encoder together over the EEG image pair's dataset. This way, adopting stable diffusion further to work properly for EEG encodings. The paper also shares some results. And here we can see on the left a ground truth image which matched an EEG signal in the dataset. And to the right of each ground truth image we can see three samples from Dream Diffusion for the same EEG signal, which looks very impressive. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video.